First of all, thank you very much, Ellie, for giving us this wonderful opportunity to be here. And I'm here together with, uh, my name is Tanya Mather, and I'm here together with Lee Wright, who is, well, she'll give her introduction. So would you like to give your introduction? Yes, it is wonderful. Again, first of all, thanks, Ali. This is great to have this opportunity to talk to you and your, your team and wonderful group of women. Um, I'm Ashley Wright, uh, as Tanya just shared, and I am a holistic interior designer. I help people figure out how to deal with their space in an empowered way. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, yeah, so um, Lee and I were going to be doing precisely this weekend, we were going to be doing a retreat together because um, Lee focuses is primarily on our, the spaces that we live in. And I focus on, I'm a wellness coach, so I focus on our interior space. So we were going to look at change your space, change your life, which is really changing your Lee takes care of the external space and I take care of the internal space. And by making certain changes, today we're going to be discussing five changes that you can make. So I'm going to hand the microphone over, Lee, if you want to start, and then I'm just going to give the wellness tip as she goes on. Yes. As Tanya just shared, we were going to do this retreat, which is all about helping to empower you to figure out how to change your space, to change your life. And today we're going to focus on decluttering. Um, Given the overall global circumstances, lots of people are sitting at home and we all have lots of stuff. And this is a great opportunity to look at your space in a slightly different way. So I'm gonna just go through five tips, right? And the first one is a leism of mine. I use it all the time and it is called like with like. <laughs> Often we're too busy to actually organize our spaces properly. Right? We just ignore all the stuff that we accumulate in our home, thinking one day in the future, I'm going to have time to do this. Well, you know, maybe that time is right now. <laughs> you know, we are in our homes, uh, most of us having to be confined in them a lot more than we're used to. And so we can intimately see all the stuff that we have that's spilling over into the spaces where they possibly do not belong. So this tip, like with like, you want to go around your home and return every single thing into the space in which it belongs. So the stuff that belongs in your bathroom belongs in your bathroom. So for example, like the extra toilet paper needs to go into the bathroom, right? Clothes need to go into the bedroom. Your coats need to go into the coat closet. All of that kind of cooking stuff even the overflow of extra stuff that you're buying needs to go into your kitchen or right next to your kitchen. So first decluttering tip, is go around your entire space and put the stuff where it belongs, like with like. <laughs> tip number one, and I know Tanya's got something to share about an internal version of that. Yeah, all right. So I think this is when we were discussing this um, and how we were going to talk about it. I think that when we were looking at like with like, and if we look at it within ourselves, I think one of the things that is, is exhausting and where we really find ourselves a little bit messy, where we can declutter our internal space is having our mind a little bit more like with like. So to follow that, to organize our times with, so say for example, let me give you an example. If I'm having a conversation with somebody and an emotion from something else comes up, it doesn't belong in that space. Okay. Focus on the real present moment of, you know, that if anything is from our past, say for example, that do we really want to bring it into this present moment? So I think really organizing our thoughts in specific times when they are specific to that moment and not something that maybe is a worry, a concern. So say for example, when we're now in this situation and we are concerned about our future, which is absolutely normal because there's a huge amount of uncertainty, but it's what can we do so try and maybe take a time and say, okay, this is the time that I'm going to really focus myself on my concerns. Let me write them down. What are my concerns? Become very clear and then have that time and just that time. And this is the time for, for, for talking about your concerns and maybe looking at what, what it is that you're still carrying from your past. Maybe just say, okay, this is still carrying and trying to, to really release yourself from these because when we are fully present, 
um, in this precise moment, we are sort of a little much lighter and clearer about where we want to, and we're more present in the full moment. So yeah, I think that's, that's, that's my tip as far as like with like, just yeah. organizing your thoughts and Great. emotions. Yeah. I love it. Okay. That's beautiful. Thank you. Tip number two, <laughs> remove all your trash people. <laughs> we do live in a consumeristic society. Almost globally, it is a problem. We have a lot of stuff. We hold on to things that should be thrown away, recycled, or donated. This is the time. This is really the time to get rid of the stuff that doesn't belong in your life. Unnecessary items. Those extra boxes that you have. The things that are just, you've been meaning to donate for a long time that aren't serving your life. All of this is just clutter or trash. So this tip number two is go around and remove all of the trash in your life. It is gonna serve you because even if you have the space, you know, I'm, I'm not living in America anymore, but a lot of my clients are and they have big spaces. That is not an excuse to hold on to stuff and definitely not an excuse to hold on to trash just because you have the space. So I always try to say you want to make and create the space for a bigger life. Having space in your space is incredible. The things that can happen from a creativity standpoint and from a soulfulness. So remove all the trash in your home everything that is not serving you goes out, gets put into the trash, or gets set away to be donated as soon as you can. So that's tip number two. <laughs> yeah. All right. So obviously this is something where, um, as far as I'm concerned, when we have um, thoughts that are no longer serving us. Um, and I think a lot of us, what happens is that 95% of our of our activity during the day comes from our subconscious mind. And what this means is that all of our thoughts, we, sometimes we're not even aware of our thoughts. We aren't even aware of what we're doing or how we're doing it because we get into a habitual behavior. So what happens is that now that we're at home, we might be going into more habitual behaviors and doing things the way we've always done them. But if we, if we become a little bit more aware of what, we are, what our internal dialogue is, because for me, the trash that you're talking about and what we're seeing around us is the internal dialogue. I mean, how often do, you know, we drop a cup of coffee or something like that and, oh, I'm such an idiot. And we, this, but this is internal dialogue. And the thing is that when we, when we look at, because now recent science, it indicates, clearly indicates that each cell has a membrane around it and they, they pick up this information. And this information, if I'm saying to myself, I'm useless, our body is going to understand that this is useless. So all of these negative self-talk um, is really, it's, it's our trash. And sometimes people say, but it's so difficult to change that. It is because what happens is that it comes from the subconscious mind. One of the techniques that I love to share is when we have that thought, because it's a habitual thought, and what happens is that we need to really learn how to rewire our brain in the sense, because we've got, a, we've got a neuron and that thought comes across and we've got, it's like a bridge, right? So when we're continually thinking that, it's like rebuilding that bridge and reinforcing that bridge. So what we need to start doing is having a different thought and building a new bridge so it's building a new thought. And that way we can, it's by habit. So it takes time and really what happens is that we need to be gentle with ourselves. So if we're in a habit of going in front of the mirror and saying, oh, I'm, look at my wrinkles, I'm getting old or whatever it is, just what if we looked at ourselves and say, oh, I'm so beautiful, I'm so wonderful, or I'm so good at this. And our internal dialogue is changing so that it can really make us into better people. And one of the techniques that I use is when that image comes up, or that idea and thought comes up, one way to rewire our, our, our brain is to, I love that it's like a funnel. So what we do is we, that thought comes up and then we bring it down into a tiny little um, space where it disappears, that thought and idea disappears, and then we substitute it with another one. So we bring in this other idea. And it's so like, I'm useless, boom, 
I'm wonderful, I'm great at what I do. So we just continually, until we learn how to rewire our brain, and this is what we do is, it's almost like repurposing our thoughts or recycling or you know upgrading our thoughts and really changing this. And what we need to do is to become fully aware of what we're thinking. So first of all, it's a matter of being aware. It's like, oh, that, that's my thought instead of being those habitual thoughts and really increasing that 5% of awareness that we have in a daily basis into a much greater percentage than. I love that. I love that analogy of how to remove all your trash and then to repurpose it. So tip yeah. number two is to remove all your trash and to add on to what you just said. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go around and remove all the trash. So that's just like what you said, you need to recognize what's yeah. trash, right? Yeah. The second thing, which I didn't say about your space, is also you need to set up a pattern. As soon as you are bringing something into your house, you need to make sure that that is not trash, right? Do you so really need this thing? Is this thing going to be functional or beautiful and actually come into your life and have a good purpose? So that stops the trash flow from coming in. And if it does, another helpful hint I have, this is a small space designer thing. Take the thing, get rid of all of the packaging immediately, right? I'm a big believer in being able to break down the boxes and reuse them for a variety of other reasons, whether that's gonna be craft or storage or that kind of thing or just getting rid of it where you put it into the recycling and get rid of it. So then what you have is just the object that's going to be in your life that you're using. So you're recognizing what's trash and not letting it come in. And then the stuff that is coming in, you're making sure that you recycle immediately so it doesn't accumulate. Yeah. And I think, I think Lee, having mentioned that, I think the wonderful thing about this is that is, um, you know, moving forward and when we do get out of this, because we will eventually get out of this, is to, to use this opportunity to really clear our spaces, um, not only our emotional spaces, but also our home spaces, so that when we move forward, whatever we bring in and a new way of moving forward after this is, um, you know, whatever we're going to bring into our minds, whatever we're going to bring into our lives to make sure that they are this beautiful, wonderful future that we're going to move into. Absolutely. We're creating a solid foundation to build the future on. Exactly. Because our home, our nest is a very key part of that. Right? Yeah. So number three, decluttering tip for you guys to do right now is called repair your stuff right? We all have that stuff, right? We have the things that are broken, that are not working, that need to be either cleaned or fixed or repaired or something. You need to get all those things together, all of them together, go around and gather them from all the rooms and look at it. And then you need to be honest with yourself, people. Are you really going to take apart that fan and try to rewire it and make it work. And if you really are, because that fan was really expensive or you really loved it, it was something that your husband gave you for your anniversary, whatever, like you've got to do it. Then you give yourself a time frame that you're going to complete it by. Or you're gonna be honest with yourself and you're gonna say, you know, I'm just, I'm never really gonna be able to repair that. I'm never gonna be able to fix that coffee maker. It's just, it's, I've repaired it too many times and it doesn't work. I just got to let it go. And then you need to allow yourself the freedom to let it go. So you need to gather all the stuff that you're going to repair, honestly assess whether or not you're going to repair it, get rid of the stuff that goes into the trash, goes into the recycling, whatever. So that's honesty, right? Because it's a drain, something that is broken and you cannot use that is taking up space in your life is energetically draining, right? Then you make an honest assessment and say, yeah, this really means something to me and I wanna fix it and I'm gonna fix it by June. We also have some extra time on our hands, people, right? This is the perfect opportunity, perfect opportunity to do that. If I was in my home right now, I have a whole pile of stuff that needs to be sewn right? I have buttons that are missing on jackets and ribbons that need to be added to pocketbooks, a whole bunch of things. That's my repair pile. And I have a deadline of when I need to do it. So being honest with yourself. So Tanya, what's the repair 
your stuff? Well, I think the repair, the repair is, you know, something that is repaired. There's a beautiful um, Japanese thing about how they can, how you can repair things. But I think more than repairing is, is just really realizing how we can, what we can let go of. Okay. And, you know, if it, if it can't be fixed, okay, knowing that what can't be fixed and what can be fixed, what needs to be fixed and what needs to be repaired, um, especially maybe what can be repaired is maybe relationships, maybe old relationships, um, somebody who you haven't spoken to and who is still in your mind because they said something to you maybe years and years and years ago, maybe just picking up the phone and saying, you know, hey, whatever, and just repairing that what you can repair. Um, maybe just coming to, to, to a compromise with them or maybe just forgiving them, maybe just writing a letter to them and whatever it is that you can do. And I think the other thing that, that I picked up on is, is, is letting go. I think letting go is absolutely phenomenal um, and really important. And one of the way, ways we can let go is through the breath. Okay, and I love working with the breath. If you haven't done any work, um, the yogis, they, they do what is called pranayama. And on the exhalation, so you remember I was doing this, this um, the cone exercise, right? And so what we can do is as we, as we let go, as we bring that through and into the cone point, we can use our exhalation. Because what happens is that as, the, as we exhale, we can just feel, you know, sometimes you hear somebody going, Ah, and they just let go and people are just sighing and that's just that feeling of like, okay, so then you just let it go, just allow it to go and then bring in, as you bring in your in-breath, you bring in that some, whatever it is that's new. So you can actually with that, with that, um, the, the, the exercise that I gave you previously with a cone, you can work with your breath on that and just as you exhale, let go with the exhalation. Oh, I love that. The, the one thing I want to add to the letting go is in my experience with my clients, and I'm sure you have the same experience, Tanya, is um, sometimes there's some resistance to letting go of stuff. You know, our stuff has a stickiness. It has an energetic, you know, people are like, oh, I can't really let go of, of that desk, even though it's totally dysfunctional because it came from my grandmother. And, and so I have some space clearing processes of trying to help you kind of energetically recognize that your stuff does not need to control you. You need to control you. And it's more the internal thing that you can still hold on to the love of something and not have it in your space. Yeah. I think, so I think if, if that, whatever it is, if it brings you joy, you know, when you look at it, or if it's just a sentiment that is holding on to a sentiment that is no longer serving you, that's yeah. when the item should go. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So wonderful. So tip number three, repair your stuff and let it go. <laughs> number four is about completion, right? This is a big one. Big one for me as a designer, um, obviously, because a project has a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, and as a feng shui person, it does seem to be one of the areas in most people's lives that they can have a little bit trouble completing something. So I'm going to say that, that it's really important to put into your list that once the above things are organized, right, you need to go and do room by room. One room completely, 100%. Do not try to do everything at once. It's just an impossibility. You're not a super woman. You don't have superpowers. You can't do it at supersonic speed. So you do one room because you, the rest of the house needs to stay somewhat functional and somewhat decluttered or in the zone that it was that you were already comfortable in. So you need to do one room completely, 100%. Do it, make sure that you don't imbalance anywhere else until that is done. And while you're doing your one room, I have another little inner tip. Three piles. You just need to go into one room, bedroom. Let's just say it's the bedroom. What you're using all the time is your priority and needs to be organized, right? That just makes sense. That's what you're using all the time. The second thing is what you use some of the time. What's seasonal? What's not used all the time? And then you need to figure out how to put that into a secondary location. 
doesn't need to clutter your daily space. And then the third one is, is it stuff that doesn't belong that got missed in the previous steps, right? There's daily stuff, seasonal stuff, and stuff that really doesn't belong there. But the big thing is about completing. Just be honest with yourself. Do one thing, do it really well, do it till you're done. You're going to feel a sense of satisfaction. That room's going to be a safe zone. And then you can move on to the other spaces as and when you have the energy to do it. So yeah. Tanya, what's your completion tip? Well, completion, <laughs> completion is something that, you know, going through all of these, you know, thoughts and emotions and whatever um, that, that no longer serve us. And I think coming to a point, it takes practice. And I think coming to a point where, where, you know, really where we can have power is to sort of say, okay, I know you recognize when that comes up again, but when it comes to a point where it's done is done. Okay. Completion. It's just done is done. This no longer serves me. Okay. And just really make that transition quicker. So I think in the beginning, we might become aware of something, you know, an emotion that is that, or at least a thought pattern that is, is, is habitual and it's continual. But when, as we move forward, we're start, going to start seeing it's going to come up every now and then. One of the things that I like to do is once we've moved forward and we feel that we're making progress, every now and then something's going to come up. So say we can do it like if somebody triggers us. And when they trigger us, we need to look at ourselves, really. And so when they continue, to continue triggering us, I think what I usually do, and I usually recommend to my, to, to my, all my clients, is that when that happens, we give it, we actually thank it for, for it being there. Because it's, we still have some work to do. So when that is, we thank it and we say, okay, done is done. We're done. Thank you for being there. It gives it a different power instead of getting frustrated because what we resist persists. So just saying, thank you for being here, but done is done. I'm done. Complete with it. Oh, I love that. I think that's just fabulous to think yeah. about, you know, done is done. Done is, you done. Know? Done, is done. And uh, a tip when you are complete with something, celebrate mini celebrations all you Absolutely. need to do, be grateful to yourself show yourself a little bit of self-love when you finish organizing that one room give yourself a chance to celebrate and say well done that is super super great that goes back to something that tanya was saying is about the negative self-talk there's so much information about clutter being so bad and so horrible and i say as a holistic designer there is no such thing as bad clutter it's your stuff right? It's your stuff. It's got your energy. Bad is only up here, right? So you yeah. need to reframe that in a sense that it's just, I always say there's no such thing as bad clutter. It's just not properly designed. Space, <laughs> right? So yeah. I like done is done. Completion. Yeah. yeah. So tip number five, and you're going to love this one, is slow and steady. One room at a time. You need to breathe. This is a process, people. We live in a, a, well, we lived, you know, we're in a little bit of a pause moment right now, but we lived in a world that had uh, conspicuous consumption, right? Capitalism. Stuff is constantly coming into our life. What I would find with my clients, the biggest problem was that there was an inflow, but there wasn't an organized outflow. So I'm always looking for slow and steady and there to be a flow. You know, if you love something, you need to make sure that it's in your sight. If it's functional, you need to use it, right? If it's something that needs to be archived, archived it. But slow and steady, because when we slow down and we look at our space and what a beautiful moment we have right now, if we can honor it, if we can really slow down and look authentically at our spaces and say, what isn't serving me anymore? What did I used to love, but just doesn't matter to me anymore? What do I need to let go of? And breathe into that and get that clarity and go one step at a time, one room at a time, one pile at a time and just go through it, recognizing it's a practice and it's a process. And even though here are five great tips for you to do in this moment, 
there are tips that you need to build into your lifestyle. It's a flowing thing because no matter how we come out at the other end of this global crisis that we are in, and it will be a different world, we're still going to have stuff coming into our life. We're going to still need that flow, right? But we have this magical moment where things are slowed down, like in a Marvel movie, you know? It's all in slow motion. So you can get that clarity. You can do the organization now because the busyness of our daily life has come to a much slower pace outside of our control. So take advantage of that. Slow and steady. Figure out how to create this flow that is much more sustainable going forward. Mm, I love that. I love that. And, you know, this is, this is something, you know, you talk about flow and a lot of the work that I do, we do in, in water, I do in water and water is a beautiful um, metaphor to, to discuss because when, when you look at water and it's turbulent, there's no clarity. Okay. So all of the stuff that is in the water, when it's really turbulent, when the water settles, that's when the turbulence or whatever the particles that are in it, it comes, goes to the bottom. And that's when we can see clarity. And I think this is an amazing opportunity, you know, because we've been, until now, we've been running, rushing around. And it's so funny because I saw a post the other day that somebody said, um, you know, I've been the, my excuse of not, not clearing my space is because I haven't had the time. And then they said they realized that that wasn't the reason why. <laughs> and, and I think that this is a wonderful moment for, for, you know, that, that busyness that we've been so busy running around and we've had to slow down. We've had to slow down. We can't really go anywhere and we're here where we're facing it. So what happens is that if we, when we slow down, then all of that rubble that is, or the particles that are in the water are just going to go to the bottom and sink to the bottom, allow them just to sink and we sink in and then we'll have that clarity and we will be able to really make, create moving forward from here a more sustainable way of living not only for ourselves but for our planet and for our whole society and for our world in general it's beautiful i really yeah. feel that we have a great opportunity to take this challenge and turn it to our advantage yeah. and i'm you know um, incredibly happy that ali invited us to yeah. have this conversation this is my passion you know, about helping people create a sustainable life um, through their space, because our spaces have such a deep impact. Yeah. But, you know, our internal space and our external space and feng shui, they are a reflection of each other and they can support each other. You know, so creating uh, a safe home environment helps the internal environment find a sense of peace so it can thrive. Yeah. More. Yeah. And it's a good foundation when our homes are in good place, then it's our foundation. So thank you so much, Ali, for giving us this opportunity. Yeah.